so asr binet 2023 plant pathology so since uh, the net exam is approaching very fast so we are planning to discuss uh, uh, with you know like uh, uh, subject wise starts with the general plant pathology mycology and various other concepts so uh the topics and the contents what we are going to display or disclose here are uh, probability topics we can't expect 100% but uh, there might be a chance so uh, let's starts with the general plant pathology so my name is yanath shankar reddy and i am uh, working as assistant professor in kasar college of agriculture science and applied research best you anantapur so let starts with the uh, origin of pathological words so we have plenty of pathological words like pathology fungi lichens bacteria so so many kinds of words we have uh, normally we are using uh, in a daily life right as a pathologist so we'll see how the words are originated where the actually the words are originated from what will be the meaning of the uh, words will be from there might be then we may expect uh, uh, questions uh, like this also like uh, plant pathologies or phytopathology is derived from which language or maybe greek or latin or something else something like that there might be a chance we can't come to uh, uh, exact conclusion that the such kind of questions may fall but i'm telling so we'll see starts with the phytopathology so phytopathology is a greek word see you can see any word that ends with the logy if it is ending with logy it is a greek word so phytopathology is a greek word which means which deals with the plant diseases and management phyto means plant pathology pathology in pathology pathogen means study of causal organism or pathogen logy means to study or to disclose or or uh, to discuss something like that so plant pathology is a branch of agriculture science which mainly deals with the uh, plant diseases and their management so when it comes to fungi fungi is a latin word which normally means mushroom so which normally means mushroom when it comes to lichen lichen is a greek word which means to lick to lick or which eats around itself and bacteria and virus fungicide these three are the latin words bacteria means staph can or little stick whereas a virus meaning is slimy liquid or poison or venom or infectious matter so the term virus was coined by mj bijernik mj bijernik he is also considered as father of plant virology he is also considered as father of plant virology he coined the term virus the meaning of virus is it is a poison or venom or slimy liquid so when it comes to fungicide it is also a latin word which means fungus killer or the chemical which is used to kill the fungus is called fungicide coming to the tungro so it is a philippines word which is normally called as degenerative growth degenerative growth when is so this tungro disease uh, normally we can observe in uh, you know rice uh, so when it comes to the symptoms stunted growth yellowing of leaves these are all the uh, quite common symptoms that we can observe so one extra point i would like to add is uh, rtv rice tungro virus so rice tungro virus can be identified by using a test called iodine test so the test recommended are the test used to identify the rice tungro disease is uh, uh, iodine test so actually tungro is a philippines word which means degenerative growth when it comes to quarantine quarantine is a italian word which means 40 days period quarantine is a italian word which means 40 days period and anabiroga anabiroga is a kannada word uh, which means plant disease caused by mushrooms there are another technical terms anabiroga uh, arasena roga or chendi roga or uh, some other technical terminologies are there that we are uh, that we will see in the uh, next slides tristeza so tristeza is a portuguese word or spanish word, spanish word which means sadness and the next one is crescek uh, indonesian word which means crackle so this crescek uh, symptoms or crescek phase can be observed in uh, rice bacterial leaf blight so in that phase crescek phase or wilting phase that can be observed and we also considered this stage is a very destructive stage when it comes to rice bacterial leaf blight so which is actually a indonesian word which means crackle and the last one is kadang kadang which is a philippines word which means dying dying kadang kadang is dying dying actually kadang kadang is a viroid uh, you know like uh, and and it is also the smallest viroid that was uh, discovered so far which contains just 246 nucleotides so normally kadang kadang means which is a philippines word which means dying dying so the next one is cell wall compositions of different plant pathogenic organisms 
so we have a uh, different kinds of plant pathogens uh, so which causes plant diseases right or maybe fungi bacteria virus phytoplasma some other kinds of pathogens are there so we will see the cell wall compositions how the cell wall compositions are made of because uh, if you see the previous net question papers not only previous net question papers but also other kinds of question papers we can commonly expect uh, expect some kind of you know like questions like this uh, cell wall composition of so i will tell you one more thing uh, in 2021 question paper the cell wall composition of vumicota was asked like uh, uh, vumicota consist of uh, composed of cellulose and a little amount of hydroxyproline if you see the 2021 net question paper that was already published in our uh, uh, channel so if you see this question was there uh, vumicota is composed of cellulose and a little amount of hydroxyproline something like that there might be a chance so now we'll see the different uh, org organisms are taxonomic groups and their cell wall compositions so the first one is uh, fungi so fungal cell wall is made up of chitin and a little amount of glucan so chitin and glucan and the second one is zygomycota which is made up of cell wall is made up of chitosan chitin or chitin chitosan you can call like a chitosan chitin or you can also call it as chitin chitosan and the next one is the uh, vumicota vumicota is actually uh, it's a chromista group right so which is uh, composed of cellulose and hydroxyproline just now i told you in the in the 2021 net question paper they asked like this vumicota cell wall is composed of cellulose and the little amount of like uh, they have given like chitin hydroxyproline beta glucan something like that they have given so the where vumicota cell wall is made up of com is composed of cellulose and the little amount of hydroxyproline is also present so when it comes to hypochytridiomycetes where their cell wall is made up of cellulose and chitin so when it comes to yeast yeast cell wall is made up of manin beta glucan so this question is uh, was also asked i think in 2018 maybe 2019 i'm not sure so algal cell wall the next one is algal cell wall is composed of glucan and cellulose the next one is the uh, trichomyces uh, where uh, trichomyces cell wall is made up of polygalactosamine galactan and the bacterial cell wall so bacterial cell wall is composed of peptidoglycan or mucopeptides uh, very 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 important so bacterial cell wall is composed of bacterial cell wall is composed of peptidoglycan it's otherwise called as mucopeptide mucopeptide okay so the composition of mucopeptide may vary from gram positive to gram negative bacteria so this kind of uh, uh, all this concept that we can discuss in uh, uh, in bacteriology okay and when it comes to virus virus doesn't contains any cell wall for our understanding i am simply telling so virus contains protein coat which act as a protecting structure but it's not a cell wall i'm telling you so we know very well that uh, uh, virus is composed of nucleic acid and where outside protein coat will be there so this protein coat act as a protecting structure so that we can consider it as a cell wall but it's not a cell wall i'm telling again it's not a cell wall it's a, just a protecting structure so virus contains protein coat as a protecting structure inside nucleic acid will be there the nucleic acid is the actually the infectious material of plant virus so we'll see the storage organs of plant pathogens because each uh, you know uh, like uh, each and every pathogen has a need to be a need to be uh, uh, need to uh, need to have uh, storage organs for their uh, uh, energy depositions right so we'll see fungi uh, the energy can be stored or food storage organ is glycogen or oil so when it comes to vumicota vumicota is a micro mycolaminarin it's important and algae it's a laminarin and when it comes to yeast it's a volatile volutin and when it comes to bacteria the food storage organ of bacteria is poly beta hydroxy butyrate it is otherwise called as phb poly beta hydroxy butyrate it's a very 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 important and i have seen this question in many, many exams so i'm coming once again fungi storage organ is glycogen or oil umicota mycolaminarin algae laminarin laminarin sorry and yeast volatin and bacterial storage organ is poly beta hydroxy butyrate otherwise called as phb so when it comes to the detection techniques for different kinds of pathogens so each and every pathogen need to be detected right so when we see the visual examination or in the field or maybe microscopic examination with the only microscopic examination or visual observation we can't able to come to a final conclusion that the this is the exact pathogen which is responsible for that is something like that we can't able to uh, come to conc conclusion right so there are some identification tests are there uh, so the identification tests recommended for the identification of a particular disease at the special disease now we will see what are the identification tests are there so the first one is anyway sodium hydroxide test that can be recommended for kernel bunt of wheat and ergot 
so brain flotation technique that can be recommended for wheat tundu disease wooz out to test can be recommended for bacteria all kinds of bacteria but especially rice bacterial leaf blight okay not only by sir bacterial leaf blight for almost all kinds of bacteria we can recommend wooz out test okay coming to elisa enzyme linked immunosorbent assay that was especially recommended for the identification of plant viruses so when it comes to when when we are uh, uh, discussing in uh, uh, while we uh, you know uh, if we are discussing in virology let's uh, uh, we will go in detail about all this elisa and other techniques so now it's not time because we have some other techniques uh, sorry some other uh, uh, important information regarding general pathology left right so if we start to discuss only about elisa it will take more time right so next one is the tetrazoleum chloride so this can be recommended for banana bunch top virus so banana bunch top virus so it's a very very important this technique and iodine test as i told you earlier so rice tungro virus can be recommended or identified by using iodine test so the next one is uh, so elisa technique cannot be recommended for viroids uh, so so for elisa sorry for uh, viroids detection where uh, there is a special techniques like page polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis and sds page and fluoroglucinol test these are all different kinds of tests that can be recommended for the detection of uh, viroids so coming to dapa technique this technique is especially recommended for the detection and identification of phytoplasmal diseases and paraqua technique is generally recommended for post harvest diseases and a few things i would like to tell very very important things as i can't say only the one or two important each and every single thing that what i am mentioning is a very very important sodium hydroxide kernel bunt of wheat brain flotation wheat tundu disease especially who's out bacterial leaf blight of rice are especially bacteria elisa virus tetrazoleum chloride banana bunch top virus iodine test rice tungro virus a uh, page sds base that can be recommended for viroids dapa phytoplasma and paraqua technique recommended for post harvest diseases so here uh, uh, we will see some variations uh, like tomato bunch it up so kinds of bunch it ups we will see okay so tomato bunch it up is caused by viroid tomato bunch it up viroid so tomato bunch it up is caused by viroid so whereas banana bunch it up is caused by virus right so here we are discussing about bunch it ups so we will see what are the different kinds of bunch it ups are there so tomato bunch it up is viroid when it comes to banana banana bunch it up is caused by virus and this virus is transmitted by or spread through a vector called black aphid the scientific name of the black aphid is pentalonia nigro nervosa and the next one is papaya bunch it up which is caused by lactiferous feb or feb so which is actually transmitted by leaf hopper emposa papaya emposca papaya or emposca stevensis so these are all the different kinds of bunch it up okay tomato bunch it up is a viral actually so banana bunch it up is a virus and when it comes to papaya bunch it up it's a fastidious vascular bacteria banana bunch it up it's a very very important that uh, sometimes you know questions will be fall like uh, banana bunch it up virus is transmitted by so i have seen this question many areas that's why i'm telling so banana bunch it up virus is transmitted by black aphid pentalonia nigro nervosa papaya bunch it up virus is caused uh, I, 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 you know like uh, there might be a chance i'm telling so papaya bunch it up is caused by feb or transmitted by leaf hopper scientific name is emposca papaya or emposca stevensis and tomato bunch it up is uh, normally a viroid so most of the viroid diseases are transmitted through mechanical transmission most of the viroid diseases okay or sap transmission we can also called as now we will see the different kinds of uh, chemicals that can be used in surface sterilizing so in laboratory we use different kinds of chemicals for you know like uh, uh, surface sterilization or maybe killing or different kinds of techniques we use right so now we will see some uh, uh, surface sterilizing agent and their concentration and their uses so normally ethanol can be recommended at the rate of 70 to 95% it is normally recommended for uh, uh, you know uh, uh, disinfection of bench tops sprit that can be recommended at the rate of 90% uh, and disinfecting and sterilizing of instruments and glasswares and when it comes to mercury chloride these two are surface sterilizing agent mercury chloride and sodium hydroxide is very very important we need to definitely remember this so when it comes to mercury chloride the concentration of mercury chloride is 0.1% 0.1% so when it comes to sodium hypochlorite the concentration of sodium hypochlorite is 1% so these two are normally recommended for disinfection of plant surfaces or plant parts because if you are isolating from leaf surfaces or maybe if you are isolating from a plant from root surfaces or some other uh, you know plant parts 
So these two chemicals are normally recommended for surface sterilizing agents. So mercury chloride and sodium hypochlorite. Mercury chloride can be recommended at 0.1%. When it comes to sodium hypochlorite, that can be recommended at 1%. So propylene oxide also can be recommended at the rate of 0.1%. So it is a sterilizing of filter paper. So filter paper sterilization. When it comes to formaldehyde, 1 is to uh, 10%, that is formaldehyde and water. And this can be normally recommended for elimination of pathogens uh, and also equipment, I mean, uh, uh, lab pathogens in laboratory and also equipments also used for greenhouse tools. And ultraviolet less in uh, a laminar air flow chamber, we can see ultraviolet light. Before working, we used to switch on the ultraviolet less for uh, a minimum 15 to 20 minutes so that can uh, use it for surface sterilizing if there is any microbes or something will be there inside the laminar airflow chamber so this ultraviolet lace will kill the uh, pathogen so this can also can be used as uh, uh, you know like a uh, uh, sterilizing agent right so now we'll see some of the susceptible susceptible stages of uh, important uh, diseases so when it comes to plant diseases uh, the plants are especially at certain stages, uh, especially at particular stages, uh, the plants are highly susceptible. So we will see what are all the different kinds of susceptible stages and uh, the diseases at uh, which disease that the, uh, that the susceptible stage, uh, I mean the, uh, the stage is more susceptible, something like that we will see. Uh, the first one is sheath blight of rice. Uh, which is uh, 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 the disease is highly, uh, I mean the plant is highly susceptible to sheath blight at the active tailoring stage. When it comes to brown leaf spot, which is caused by vegeta uh, I mean, not vegetative growth and late blight of potato at early adult stage, bean anthracnose, pot formation stage, fissure wilt, it affects all crop stages normally. And when it comes to root rot after 45 days of transplanting, cassava mosaic virus, uh, uh, the susceptible stage, early stages of crop, P root rot, pod formation, and the brown leaf spot of uh, maize, uh, it is highly susceptible at a vegetative stage of crops. So these are all the different susceptible stages of uh, uh, susceptible stages for uh, various uh, diseases. So we will see some uh, general questions like uh, uh, like you know uh, what will be the general kind of questions there might be a chance of asking. So agar agar is produced from so it is a very very important if you see 2014, 2014, 1 and 2, 2018, 1 and 2 and 2019 also this question was there agar agar is produced from gelidium species or gracilaria species or otherwise they will ask like this agar agar is produced from red algae, brown algae, white algae something like that I am telling simply. So normally agar agar is produced from red algae, gelidium species or gracilaria species. Normally agar agar is a long polysaccharide which is actually used as a solidifying agent and is composed of D-galactopyronose unit. So let's, uh, let me tell you some interesting facts about agar agar. So before introduction of uh, agar agar as a solidifying agent, gelatin, a chemical called gelatin is normally used in the laboratory for the solidification agent. So, but there was a little bit, uh, there was a, a, a slight problems with uh, uh, the use of gelatin because some bacteria uh, may digest this uh, gelatin. So, that's why it's not uh, uh, that much suitable. So, with the introduction of agar agar, Fanny Hesse is a, a scientist uh, uh, who introduced agar agar. Uh, she was uh, uh, wife of Walter Hesse, where Walter Hesse was working in uh, uh, Robert Koch laboratory. And Robert Petrie, Petrie plate was developed by Robert Petrie, right? Robert Petrie, he is also an assistant of Robert Koch. And this Walter Hesse, actually it was developed by Fanny Hesse, wife of Walter Hesse. This Walter Hesse is also an assistant of Robert Koch. And uh, so with the introduction uh, of Agar Agar, it was, uh, it became very famous because it is a highly standard and stable solidifying agent that can be recommended for culturing of almost all uh, fungal pathogens. Uh, for bacteria also, few bacteria also and virus, uh, we know very well it's a mesobiotic so that we can't able to culture and uh, it is composed of uh, gelidium species or gracilaria and uh, there are two components will be there in the agar that is agarose and agaropectin are the two components which are there in the uh, uh, agar agar so this question was asked in 2021 like what are all the components present in agar agar Agarose and agaropectin are the two compounds present in agar agar actually isolated from red algae that is gelidium species or gracilaria species okay and when it comes to the next one is cosmotic fungicide cosmotic fungicide is a trimorph why it is called cosmotic fungicide 
if you are applying on the plant surface or plant leaf surface it's produced like a cosmetic function because if, if the ladies are doing some kind of makeup we can see a layer right so such a kind of layer can be formed on the leaf that's why it's called as cosmetic fungicide that is tridomorph so calexin is the trade name of uh, tridomorph okay rescue treatment fungicide that is triademiphon triademiphon so there is a difference uh, kindly note it down so cosmetic fungicide that is tridomorph tridom is calixin when it comes to rescue treatment fungicide triademiphon and the trade name is bailatan and one more fungicide is phenarimol phenarimol the trade name is block rimdin or rubigon so these two fungicide triademiphon and phenarimol are recommended uh, are, uh, uh, are the rescue treatment fungicides so the next one is the first plant defense activator compound so the first plant defense so what is the first compound that can be developed or uh, sorry discovered that can act as a activator defense activator compound so the first developed compound is ActiGuard and it is also called as CGA245704. Nothing doing, you need to remember this. And it was first discovered in the, sorry, reported in the year of 1996. Okay, what is the first plant defense activator? ActiGuard. It is a CGA245704. It's very, very important. I have seen this question in many areas. So the next one is first resistant gene was cloned, HM1. HM1 is the first resistant gene that was cloned, okay. International Seed Health uh, Testing Laboratory is located in Netherlands and it was established in 1918. So the first seed testing station was established at Saxony, UK. Okay. And the next one is the first international conference on biocontrol agents of plant pathogen was held in USA at 1960. And the most commonly used surface sterilizing agent, sodium hypochlorite. In the previous slides uh, we discussed, right? So when it is a sodium hypochlorate, the concentration is 1%. If it is a mercury chloride, the concentration is 0.1%. Okay. So who is the first president of Indian Phytopathological Society? So SR Bose is considered as the president of uh, first president of Indian Phytopathological Society, whereas the second president is J.F. Daster. Okay and the current president of Indian Phytopathological Society. So when it comes to the societies, for plant pathology in India, we have the most prestigious society that is Indian Phytopathological Society. So the first president of Indian Phytopathological Society was S.R. Bose, whereas the present president is S.C. Dubey in 2023. So let's talk a few things about uh, Indian Phytopathological Society. So which was actually uh, come up with the idea of establishing IPS is B.B. Mundkur. He is considered as father of uh, Indian phytopathology. Sorry, I am so sorry. Uh, father of Indian phytopathology is, uh, you know, like uh, E.J. Butler, right? E.J. Butler, I am sorry. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Dube, uh, sorry, B.B. Mundkur. So, B.B. Mundkur come up with an idea and he established uh, Indian phytopathological society under the chairmanship of uh, S.R. Bose. So they came up with an idea and uh, they started all the uh, requirements and they established 1947, February 28. So where they laid foundation and they also started a journal called Indian Phytopathology. This was the journal that was published by Indian Phytopathology Society every year. And the journal started to publish uh, the, you know, uh, start the gathering of articles from 1948. But Indian Phytopathological Society was started by B.B. Mundkur. I'm sorry, he's not a father of Indian Phytopathology, but E.J. Butler is considered as father of Indian Phytopathology. So the first chairman of Empirical Bureau of Mycology, the first chairman of Empirical Bureau of Mycology is E.J. Butler in 1921. So in 1921, he became the first chairman of Empirical Bureau of Mycology. So as I told you now, E.J. Butler is considered as father of plant pathology in India. He is not only considered as father of plant pathology, he is also considered as father of Indian mycology. So I will, let me say simply, he is also considered as father of, uh, 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 E.J. Butler is considered as normally father of plant pathology and as well as mycology in India. So he wrote a very famous book, Fungi and Diseases in Plants. Fungi and Diseases in Plants. The book was published in 1918. 1918. So uh, when it comes to B.B. Munkur, B.B. Munkur wrote a book called Fungi and Plant Diseases and the book was published in 1948. So we'll see the next one. The first Indian university who introduced postgraduate program in plant pathology. That is Agra University, which was uh, uh, introduced the first postgraduate program in plant pathology. That is MSc. Postgraduate means MSc, right? So Agra University, 1945. 
and annual review of phytopathology was uh, published in the year 1963 annual review of phytopathology so the pore size of hepa filter it is very very important okay uh, the pore size of hepa filter is 0.3 micrometer what is hepa mean high efficiency particulate air this is a filter that can be used in laminar airflow chamber let's talk something about laminar airflow chamber okay uh, laminar airflow chamber was first developed by whitefield in a, uh, in 1869 i think right so laminar airflow chamber first developed by uh, uh, whitefield so inside there will be a small uh, filter will be there the small filter is called the hepa filter where the pure air will come out the pure air will come out so hepa means high efficiency particulate air so the pore size of hepa filter is 0.3 micrometer it is also one of the important question and the commercial name of beef extract beef extract lab lamco it's not a big deal so when it comes to the example of good safner so the example of good safner is a lime good example of good sticker gum arabic yeah and the next one is example of wound hormone it's traumatin is the wound hormone okay traumatin is the wound hormone so the next one is which organism can be used as a biofertilizer in rice crop normally in by uh, in rice we can use blue green algae that is bga so what are all the gases used for gas sterilization in gas sterilization we use normally uh, formaldehyde propylene oxide and potassium permanganate are the uh, gases that we normally used uh, for gas sterilization in even in mushroom cultivation also uh, they used to sterilize the entire room by using this uh, formaldehyde so okay so these are all the gas sterilizing agents so now we will see staining agents so what are all the different kinds of uh, staining agents used in uh, identification of uh, various uh, uh, maybe organisms or maybe various organelles or structures so the first one is endospore so the endospore staining agent is malachit green so plasmid staining agent acridin dye capsule staining agent indian ink flagella staining agent carbol fission lichens staining agent archin the inclusion body staining agent is azurea cytoplasm and nucleus staining agent is acetic dye and finally bacterial food storage organ staining agent is sudan black weed it's very very important i have seen this and endospore staining agent is malachit green whereas plasmid uh, capsular so this is different kinds of uh, uh, you know organelles or structures and their staining agents so now we'll see the different staining techniques that can be recommended like uh, you know like uh, simple staining gram staining something like that so what are all the staining compounds that they are using now we'll see in general so when it comes to simple staining a crystal violet methylene blue and saffron in uh, normal use that is gram staining okay uh, simple staining sorry not gram staining simple staining and when it comes to gram staining a primary strain is a crystal violet mordant iodine or decolorizing agent 95% ethanol counter stain is saffron in so different kinds of stains in uh, gram staining so when it comes to flagella staining uh, stain silver nitrate so silver nitrate can be uh, used so uh so let me see let me tell you normally simple staining normally recommended uh, for you know like uh, to see or to visualize the cell structure or maybe size morphology and arrangement of bacteria so when it comes to gram staining that is used to differentiate between the gram positive and the gram negative bacteria so flagella staining normally used to uh, identify the flagella arrangement in a bacteria so capsule staining so in capsule staining two kinds of stains can be used acid stain and basic stain so in acid stain uh, congo red and negrosan can be used and when it comes to basic stain crystal violet and saffron can be used so it is used to differentiate the capsule material from the basic uh, sorry bacterial cell endospore staining agent we know endospore it is a heat resistant spore uh, that can be produced by uh, some uh, bacteria like uh, clostridium bacillus uh, so such kind of bacteria will produce a heat resistant spore called endospore so the primary stain for endospore staining agent is malachit green and the counter stain is saffronin so acid fast staining uh, in uh, the primary stain is carbol fission or decolorizer acid alcohol and when it comes to counter stain it is methylene blue so dense stain that can be recommended for phytoplasma i will tell you it is very very important so dense stain is normally recommended for the identification of phytoplasma see now we will see what is the dense stain so methylene blue a part of methylene blue and azar 2 and sodium carbonate is a combinative or collectively called as 
dense stain so dap dap stain is also recommended for the identification of phytoplasma so the what are all the techniques that is used for identification of phytoplasma one is dense staining and the second one is dap staining so methylene blue or azure 2 or sodium carbonate collectively that is dense stain when it comes to dap that is called 4 6 diamino 2 phenol phenol indole and lactophenol blue or lactophenol that is uh, aniline blue normally used to prepare the microscopic slides for the examination of fungi under microscope so now we'll see the genome uh, internal makeup of a genome so mycovirus so mycovirus genome is composed of uh, double stranded dna hypovirulence so the phenomena of hypovirulence also based on double stranded dna so mycovirus and the phenomena and hypovirulence are uh, that depends on double stranded rna sorry not dna and the cyanophages and bacteriophages their genome is composed of double stranded dna so gemini virus genome is double stra single stranded dna whereas the pyx 174 is a single stranded dna so what are the modal organisms that are using in the genetic studies normally in genetic studies we need to have one modal organism for each and every pathogenic group for fungi we are using aspergillus and neurospora when it comes to bacteria agrobacterium is normally used as a model organism it is also called as farmer's best friend and it is especially recommended in genetic transformation and when it comes to virus tobacco mosaic virus and califlower mosaic virus is normally recommended normally uh, used as a model organism so when it comes to nematode kinorhabditis elegans or kinorhabditis elegans is uh, used as a model organism in nematode studies so international congress on plant pathology so these are all non-profitable organizations these are international congresses non-profitable organizations uh, so that they used to conduct our uh, you know like uh, 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 workshop or maybe i mean uh, uh, reports for every five years in advancements and what are exactly going on plant pathology for the sake of uh, pathology development okay so it is a uh, happens once in every five years and it's a non-profitable organization it is actually started in the year of 1968 so we'll see uh, the first uh, uh, you know like uh, congress will happen in 1968 that is the venue is london why i uh, uh, placed this uh, you know like all the venues and all those things in 2019 uh, they have asked the uh, venue of uh, 10th international congress of plant pathology was held in beijing china so they have asked this that's why i placed all those things so we don't need to worry about maybe precedents and tenues so let's go with uh, venues and as well as years so 1968 first international congress of plant pathology second international is 1973 minneapolis uh, usa third one is 78 munich germany 83 fourth melbourne australia fifth one is kyoto japan 88 and the sixth one is the Montreal, Canada, 1993. And the second one is Edinburgh, UK, 1998. Eighth one is the Christchurch, New Zealand, 2003. And ninth one is Torino, Italy, 2008. Tenth one is Beijing, uh, China, 2013. This question was asked in 2019. So the eleventh one is Boston, MA, USA. And the twelfth international congress that is going to happen this year. This is supposed to be going to happen in Lyon, France. Lyon, France. So let's see about taxonomy. So for uh, you know like uh, classification, there are different kinds of classifications and taxonomies are there, right? So Linnaeus is considered as father of taxonomy. We know very well. So where he initiated taxonomy or naming of plants and all those things. So while Linnaeus first time, he is Linnaeus, okay? He is Linnaeus. While he, first time in 1753, while he was initiating uh, uh, two kingdoms, he initiated. First one is Plantae and Animalia. All plants comes under Plantae, whereas all animals comes under Animalia. He came up with two kingdoms only, okay? And Ernest Haeckel in 1866, he came up with, is Ernest Haeckel, he came up with three kingdoms. Uh, Plantae and Animalia was there. He added one extra thing, Protista. Protista is the extra thing that is added to Linnaeus classification so that it become uh, three kingdom classification. So in 1956, Herbert Cox, sorry, Copeland, he is Herbert Copeland. He came up with four kingdom classification. So, Protista plant and Animalia was there. Uh, along with, uh, among, uh, I mean, uh, uh, not only uh, for this three, he added one more that is Munira. So, Munira, so he placed as prokaryotes, Protista eukaryotes, Plantae, Metaphyta, and Animalia, Metazoa. And Whittaker, this is uh, one of the important one. Five kingdom classification was given by some kind of some questions like this I have seen. So he is a Whittaker. He came with a new idea that is five kingdom classification. So what are all the four kingdoms that was proposed by Copeland? 
along with that he proposed one more extra thing that is a fungi he placed fungi into a separate kingdom that's why he become very famous so the questions i have seen like this five kingdom classification was given by whitaker or uh, maybe sometimes they may also groups also what are the five in five kingdom classification what are the groups are there something like that monira protista fungi plantae and animalia are the five uh, uh, groups so when it comes to six kingdom classification that was given by uh, carlos 1977 you bacteria archaea bacteria protista fungi plantae and animalia and chatter 1937 he gave two empires okay uh, eukaryota and prokaryota and carlos 1919 he gave three domains bacteria archaea and eukarya these are all the three three domains that was given by uh, carlos uh, so there might be we can expect one or two questions maybe 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 because this is uh, uh, this is all about uh, you know ta- uh, you know grouping of fungi and other pathogenic uh, organisms by uh, taxonomists so in general taxonomy we can see phylum subphylum class order family genus species something like that for every single organism the nomenclature will be there right so the taxonomy will be there right so we'll see general taxonomy how you, uh, uh, how it will work so phylum always ends with whatever the phylum it is the phylum always ends with mycota and subphylum always ends with mycotina class always ends with mice it is whatever the class it is whatever the fungi it is whatever it is it's always ends with mice it is subclass always ends with mice it is order ends with ales family ends with aca in exams we can uh, we can uh, we can see questions it's been already asked many times so we can see questions like in taxonomy of fungi order ends with order ends with ales family ends with aca phylum ends with mycota class ends with mice it is something like that they will ask okay so let's uh, let's see an example so if you see example here so we will see the taxonomy of wheat stem rust okay so the phylum of wheat stem rust is basidio mycota as i told you phylum always ends with mycota right so the second one is subphylum the subphylum of basidio wheat stem rust is basidio mycotina as i told you always ends with mycotina class is a paxinio mycetes paxinio mycetes as i told you class ends with mycetes actually the spelling was uh, uh, wrong here and subclass always ends with paxinio mycetidae mycetidae order all is paxinials as i told you ends always ends with ales family of wheat stem rust is paxiniaceae so it ends with aca so however we have seen here the same thing uh, uh, applies here right so order always ends with ales family as always ends with ac whatever the taxonomy which stem not only which stem you can take rice blast you can take the trichoderma you can take bacteria whatever it is if it is a phylum ends with mycota sorry fungi it's not bacteria i'm telling so fungi for fungi this will uh, this will be applicable so class ends with mycetes subclass mycetidae order ales family aca so now we'll see some uh, mycotoxins and uh, toxins which are produced by various species of fungi and their effects on animals so aspergillus so in aspergillus so aflatoxin which produces b1 toxin b1 kind b2 g1 g2 m1 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 m2 so these are all the different kinds of toxins which are produced by aflatoxins so aflatoxin is actually produced by aspergillus flavus and aspergillus parasiticus so forget about all this uh, food affected all those things if it is an important if there is an important stuff will be there that i will tell you so but we need to remember mainly uh, questions will be fall like this so aflatoxin is uh, isolated have been uh, uh, is produced from aspergillus flavus or aspergillus parasiticus the different kinds of species they will ask but aflatoxin is mainly produced by aspergillus flavus and aspergillus parasiticus and other species also produce uh, aflatoxins but the main species are chief sources aspergillus flavus or aspergillus parasiticus so many uh, strains has been given like b1 b2 g1 g2 m1 m2 so among the strains b1 is a very 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 dangerous strain so they will ask questions like this which of the following strain of aspergillus is very dangerous or carcinogenic something like that they will ask so among the strains b1 b1 aflatoxin b1 is highly carcinogenic so the next one is uh, 
sterigmato uh, cystine that was produced by aspergillus nidulans and aspergillus vesicolors so these are all aflatoxins or aspergillus toxins okay now we will see about the toxins which is produced by fusarium alone fusarium alone so fusarium produce four kinds of toxins xerolinone don dioxinivalenol trichothecins fuminosins these are all the different kinds of toxin that is produced by uh, uh, fusarium so now we'll see geronol produced by fusarium graminearum and dioxinivalenol is also produced by fusarium graminearum trichothecin is produced by fusarium graminearum and a species of fusarium equisetti and fuminosins is produced by fusarium verticillates and fusarium proliferatum so this are all mostly produced in corn and one thing that i would like to tell you is if fuminosins the fuminosin if if the animals are eating fuminosins or if the horses are infecting corn that is infected with the fuminosins if the horses develop a symptoms called leukoencephalomalacia so the questions i have seen this question and not in net but uh, i don't know i just uh, maybe in some entrance exam i have seen this question uh, they have asked like this so due to the infection of fuminosins which of the following symptoms that was developed in uh, horses leukoencephalomalacia is the symptoms that was developed in horses due to the infection or due to the toxification of or due to the intoxication of fuminosin infected grains okay now we will see the toxins so that is produced by penicillin so patulin citrinin rubratoxin these are all the different kinds of toxin that is produced by penicillium sir we are produced by the species of penicillium expansum citronum rubrum these are all different kinds of uh, uh, species ergot alkaloid so this one is ergot ergot so which is produced by claviceps species species and one more species is neotyphodium species these are all the different kinds of toxin that is produced by ergot so tremors convulsions abortion and hallucinogenic so the different kinds of properties this ergot toxin is having so the toxins which is produced by both the species of aspergillus and penicillium so acrotoxins otherwise called as nephrotoxin which is produced by the species of aspergillus flavus and penicillium verrucosum and when it comes to cpa cyclopenzoic acid these are all produced by aspergillus flavus and penicillium species and uh, trimorgenic toxin that is produced by aspergillus flavus and uh, penicillium cyclopodium and penicillium palatans so these are all the different kinds of toxins that is produced by the both the species of aspergillus and as well as penicillium so when it comes to first genome sequencing this is very very important here out of four times that i wrote as i told you that i wrote four times net exam out of that i have seen two three times one question from uh, at least one question from this topic and we may expect this year also and may not be also and first fungi to be completely genome sequenced here there are some complication first fungi in the sense first plant pathogenic fungi okay so the first plant pathogen so here we are discussing genome sequencing of plant pathogens these are all are completely related to plant pathogens only so the first plant pathogenic fungus to be completely genome sequenced is rice blast magnoporte grisia or uh, pyricularia varize that was sequenced by d netal in 2005 so the genome size is 40 mb okay and the first plant pathogenic bacteria to be completely genome sequenced is xylella fastidiosa that was sequenced by a j g simpson in the year of 2000 the genome size is 0 2.2 uh, 2.68 mb so this four things the the three things we need to definitely remember because uh, definitely there might be the chance of asking uh, organisms or the scientist involved in or the year also okay so last year 2021 this question was asked so in the respective field which of the following bacteria was first human genome sequenced they asked two things and human bacteria that is uh, haemophilus influenza and in combination of uh, xylella fastidiosa in the field of humans haemophilus influenza is the first sequenced bacteria when it comes to plant pathogenic bacteria to be completely genome sequenced is xylella fastidiosa so this xylella fastidiosa causes a disease called peirce disease or peirce disease of grape vine which is caused by xylella fastidiosa and it was sequenced by a j g simpson in the year of 2000 and the first dna virus to be completely genome sequenced is califlower mosaic virus it was sequenced by frank et al in the year of 1980 and when it comes to rna virus 
tobacco mosaic virus is the first rna virus to be completely genome sequenced it was sequenced by golet et al in the year of 1982 and the genome size of tobacco mosaic virus is 6.3 to 6.5 kb and the next one is a viroid the first viroid is completely genome sequenced is potato spindle tuber viroid and it was sequenced by gross et al in 1978 and dixon in 1979 so the nucleotide is 359 nucleotide it contains 357 to 359 so the first is to be completely genome sequenced is saccharomyces cerevisiae in the year of 1996 and yeast genome project was actually launched launched in 1989 and the project was ended in 1996 that is yeast genome project so the size of the entire yeast genome project is 12.1 mb and the first nematode to be completely genome sequenced is kino rhabdis elegans and it was first sequenced by andrew fire and craig mello so they identified a special mechanism that is rna interference that is called rna interference or post transcriptional gene silencing so that mechanism was first discovered in nematode that is kino rhabdis elegans that was discovered by andrew fire and craig mello in 1998 so for the discovery of rna interference they got nobel prize in 2006 so when it comes to sequencing the first nematode sequenced is kino rhabdis elegans only in 1998 so again the red bread mold neurospora crassa it was uh, sequenced by galagan in 2003 and the size is 40 mb so definitely every single thing that what i posted or that what i placed here that is related to genome sequencing is important we may expect okay so genome sequencing other biotic life so previously we discussed about only plant pathogens now we will see other biotic life so first bacteriophage sequence is bacteriophage ms2 in 1976 which contains 3569 nucleotides or base pairs and phase so that is uh, phase pi x174 in 1977 5375 base pairs in humans human genome project was launched in 1990 it was finished in 2003 which contains the information of 3.2 gb gigabytes so the bacteria uh, that is humo humo humophilus influenza uh, 1995 the size is 1.8 mb mustard plant arabidopsis thaliana first plant to be completely genome sequenced in 2000 135 mb fruit fly drosophila melanogaster 2000 165 mb malaria parasite that is plasmodium uh, uh, falciparum 2002 22.9 mb fission yeast cytosaccharomyces pombe 2002 14 mb rice varisa sativa 2004 size is 420 mb so there might be a chance of asking so just go through so the next one is the plant pathological society last year the first question here we are seeing right so the first uh, is 1891 netherland society of plant pathology is the first and oldest society of plant pathology so they asked a question like this so which of the following society is the oldest society of plant pathology that is the netherland society of plant pathology so 1891 so now i will tell you there are many societies other i will tell you only important one so the first society or the oldest society of plant pathology is netherland society of plant pathology the second one is british society of Pla- Mike, uh, sorry british mycological society 1896 and american phytopathological society was established in the year of 1908 so phytopathological society of japan 1916 and uh, forget about remaining and uh, come to when it comes to india it's a indian phytopathological society in 1947 so australian phytopathological society 82 and the remaining are uh, not a big deal and on the right side i have given what are all the different kinds of journals that was uh, released or published uh, uh, yearly or maybe monthly basis or quarterly basis from the societies but remember two four things uh, two three things like uh, oldest society of plant pathology that is netherland society of plant pathology and american society of plant pathology established in 1908 and uh, 1929 canadian society of plant pathology and 1929 chinese society of plant pathology again and 1947 indian society of plant pathology so very very important indian society of plant pathology was established by bb munko right so and australian society 69 these are all the different kinds of societies for further more information and future guidance and career guidance not only for plant pathology but also for genetics Uh, we can collective call this uh, you know plant science you guys can always reach out as uh, www.geekyresearcher.com stay geeky stay tuned we are team geeky researchers